Welcome to all our participants to today's Spark South Africa Innovation Breakfast Meeting. It is heartwarming to see quite a wide representation across different sectors. I would like to acknowledge in particular significant supporters of this program at the UKZN the leadership, Professor Busisi Wengama, who is the Deputy Vice Chancellor of the College of Health Sciences, and the Dean and the Head of our School of Laboratory and the Medical Sciences, Professor Musa Mabandla. I would like to acknowledge also the Eteguini Municipality Leadership that is led by Councillor Sipo Kaunda who is the Chair of Economic Development Committee, who endorsed this program before it was fully supported by the Council, as well as the Economic Development Unit Head, Mr. Shannon Tudurram, with his Deputy Ajit Maharaj. And acknowledge and appreciate the participation of the SPAC Global Partners, the director of SPAC Oceana, Professor Michael Wallach, we welcome you. And Professor Colin Masimirembwa from Zimbabwe, whom alongside Tulio de Oliveira are co directors of SPAC Africa. We will have a presentation that will be delivered by Tulio and myself. At the end of our presentation, we are hoping to take as much questions as possible. So please do put your questions using that chat tool. As a brief introduction, Professor Tulio de Oliveira is the director of the Guazulu Natal Research Innovation and Sequencing Platform and the, and the professor within the College of Health Sciences at UKZN. I am the grants and the project manager at CRISP and the project manager for the Spark South Africa. Um, Tulio, I will hand over to you to get started with the presentation. Okay, thank you, Google. Yeah, it is, uh, yeah, it's great to, to, to restart this project, this program, the, the, the Spark South Africa after um, the COVID pandemic, yeah. And especially important because because Spark Global had a, had a very a big activity on the on the pandemic, yeah. Also together with CRISPR, and why we are we are really excited to to restart this program is because now we we have we will be also funding a number of projects, which is crucial for the full development of the Spark program. Yeah. So today, what we're going to do is to, is to, is to present the Spark program, which is a mentorship program for translational scientists, but also for funding projects. And then we will present the call that we're gonna just be, be, be releasing now, okay? So let's just put my presentation here, yeah. So what, what we also want, it, it, it's a lot of interaction, so we're gonna have time to, to interact a lot, yeah. And so, and so today, what we're gonna be talking, it's about Spark South Africa and the biotech call for proposals on diagnostic development in, in, in Etaquenia, yeah. And this, is, and this is a program that is being, is being led by, by the University of KwaZulu-Natal, CRISP, but also with our municipality, yeah. So, of course, one of the greatest ways to start always uh, is just to put what's the vision of, uh, of our program or, or the greater vision, as, as Fernando Bericio highlighted to us a, a few times. Uh. So, so our vision is, is really to transform Durban in the biotech capital of Africa and create a vibrant ecosystem that translates science into benefit to society. Yeah? So that's gonna be the, the big blue sky vision that we're gonna be follow in the next, probably in the next five years or, or the next decade, yeah. 
But how do we do that? How do you, you develop this big, big, uh, big vision? Yeah. So, so one thing that's important here in South Africa and especially at Aquen in Durban is that we also have to create an ecosystem. Yeah. And it's not only uh, generate projects that can go to the market, but we have to create the whole ecosystem on biotech innovation commercialization in, in South Africa. So that's the big vision that we are looking for. But what we're going to be doing is to take baby steps, yeah, and to really focus on, 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 on have out, outputs and outcomes very quick. And so that's where our first activity this year is what we call the Spark South Africa and which is a funding and mentorship program with some of the top organizations in the world there. And, and not only we, we have members from, from the SPAC Global in this call, we also have Giorgio that, that was the founder and CEO of Find that developed Gene Expert. And we have a lot of other people that is participate on that, such as people from industry, from banks, yeah, clinicians, because the whole idea is to create this whole uh, relationship between all the different partners to bring commercial uh, products to the market, yeah. So, so this program that we, we are presenting today, it is funded by Etaqueni Municipality with the big towards transform Dubai in the biotech capital of Africa, yeah. So just, just, just to give a feedback on Spark, yeah. Spark is this very exciting uh, initiative that started in the Silicon Valley, yeah more specific in Stanford University. Yeah. And what they did, uh, they, they, they completely challenged the status quo of biotech innovation. Normally biotech innovation have a 5% success rate on idea to, to move into the market. And what they did, they got 62% success rate. Yeah. So they, they, they funded and they mentored 117 projects, similar to the ones that we're going to be launching and hopefully to mentor in the next few years in Durban, yeah, which give rise to 43 startups, 13 companies, yes, 17 uh, products that are in clinical trial, yeah, and of course, some of them fails. Uh. So, so the success rate was quite um, unheard in the field, uh, and, and I'm going to come to you what was the secret to that and why we think that it is so exciting to do this program. Uh. Then when they, they, they start expanding this project around the world, another very successful project, it is, is spread to Asia, both in Tokyo, but also in Taiwan. In Taiwan, it grew to be not only centered in only one university, like in Stanford, but with six anchor universities. And then to have a more focus on medical device and drug development team. And again, they, they also got a success rate much, much higher than the the, the, the normal biotech field of 41%, yeah, which give rise to 41 startups, yeah, with 869 that are now in clinical trial. And one of the important things is also what they call the attrition rate from the 41 startups, yeah, over 80% survive for, for the first two or three years. Yeah. And, and, and so that's not only about creating uh, startups or creating products that enter clinical trial, but also make sure that they, they try to succeed when they enter the market, yeah. And then the program starts spreading to Europe, yeah, to, to many different countries and organizations. Here in my table in the bottom, I just have when it's starting the year, yeah. It's starting 2015 in Berlin and then moving to, to Finland, which took that almost as a national program of, of translational, uh, translational science from, from medical uh, practice, yeah. In, in Finland, it involves 13 different universities, yeah. And at the moment, they have 54 projects, yeah? and then also spread to Israel, Norway, France, Poland, Italy, and, and around the world, yeah. So why such a program is, is spreading so fast, yeah? So if you just, if you just ground that you know, on over years and number of the Spark sites, uh, it grew basic from being in Stanford in 2014 to over 60 sites around the world in 2020. Yeah. And they are really distributed not only across the world, but they involve probably all the major um, universities that create an ecosystem with partners, commercial partners around that. Yeah. We managed to, to 
to start a, a, a Spark program in, in Africa. Yeah, at the moment it's run on the on the abyss in Zimbabwe by calling Massimo Nero and by myself and Google here in South Africa. Yeah. And, and and we are really excited about about really now have the funding to fund the projects. Huh? So so let me show you why what's the secret of success of, of Spark? Yeah, one of the things is regular meetings on a university campus. Yeah, and involve collaboration of at least between scientists and clinicians. So that's very important. Yeah? You have to have both the doctors and the scientists together. Yeah. You also engage regularly with many industrial scientists as volunteers, and we have we have a few on this call, yeah. And then with the objective to have a big mentorship or teaching, uh, and in mind methodology focus on addressing unmet medical needs, yeah. So the idea is an open exchange of idea. It doesn't need to be hierarchical, and there's no consensus based. We're really trying to 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 really stimulate yeah ideas out of the box yeah that can come sometime without from sometimes from junior people to more senior people. What's very uncharacteristic with universities? Eh? We we are very hierarchical. So one of the secrets of this program is to have very low hierarchy, yeah? but also to promote rep reproducible science. What it mean reproducible science? Science that can extend like industrial uh, level uh, scrutiny and that can be reproduced and give rise to products. Yeah? And the idea is to learn from the success and from failures. And that's what we have this great chance in South Africa. Yeah? So what does Spark try to do? Yeah, we try to ensure that high quality inventions from academia translate to benefit to the patients. That's our main, main objective. We always have the patient in mind, yeah, on try to get then really a quality of life to increase for the patient. We really think that's our social responsibility. It provides also uh, education to our students and also to our faculty to prepare them for jobs that they will hold. As you are aware, uh, our universe, a lot of time we prepare academics, we don't prepare them to really be uh, industrialists or run companies, yeah? And the idea is that to build a vibrant local biopharma uh, ecosystem, eh? And to be honest, it's a lot of fun, eh? or, or in the words of Daria, it's uh, accelerating, yeah? And, and then, so for example, we have many examples uh, from around the world. As I, I told you, hundreds of, of startups have been created and products. So that's basic, just to summarize this, the success factors of the Spark program, yeah? It is not, not funding. People don't realize that because the funding for the SPAC program is quite minimal, yeah? And the whole thing is the whole ecosystem. And that's what differentiates the SPAC program from other programs. Uh, a lot of programs they will give, they, people can apply proposal, they will give funding, and then the person have to go and develop everything around. But what SPAC does is this full circle of like having funding, uh, uh, bridging research and development with, with discovery, uh, getting access to core facilities at academic institutions, yeah, and, and research laboratories, because a lot of time for startups is very, very difficult to get access to this, to, to this very high level equipment. For example, in CRISP, we have like over 40 million rand on equipment, yeah. But more important, uh, education with, with mentorship, lecture, seminars, workshops, and then also with business experts, with coach and industry ex experts. Yeah? So the whole idea is to create this whole cycle that the idea with enough passion, but also with business sense, can allow to move that to the market. Yeah. So that's why we have engaged with, with, with the Spark program for the past two years. Yeah, it, it, it came a lot from our relationship that we have with Stanford University in our own research, many of our of our students when they finish uh, degrees, they, they get positions of postdocs on Stanford and, and we have a big program of research with them, especially with HIV drug resistance, which allow us to learn about this program and approach them and become part of the, of the SPAC global community, yeah. 
So we, in the first call for projects in South Africa, we have focused on diagnostics. Yeah, the main questions why diagnostics? Yeah, the main question is because we have to get to focus on first what we have expertise locally. Yeah? So both at CRISP at UKZN and also we, we have also a uh, George in the call. He's the ex CEO of Find that produced the gene expert, for example. Yeah, we have that South Africa has some experience on, on applying and developing diagnostics, uh, probably from our long-term uh, pandemics of HIV and TB, yeah. We also have some good co-facilities within our universal universities around, around Durban, yeah. And then we, we managed to get some funding to, to fund projects, yeah. And I think that was quite highlighted the necessity in South Africa of good affordable and high throughput diagnostics. Eh? We, we had a very good example now with COVID ID or SARS-CoV-2, how our NHLS couldn't handle the, 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 whole, the, the whole amount of tests that was needed in the country. Yeah. But we also had that from TB, that's still a problem. Or for HIV, especially for more advanced tests such as drug resistance is still very expensive. Eh? Or for other respiratory infections, or also quite important rare diseases. Eh? So I think in South Africa in general, we have some expertise, but great necessity to develop more uh, personalized and more affordable and more target diagnostic interventions, yeah. So that's where we come with, with the call, what we call the Spark Translational Science Innovation in South Africa. Yeah, the main question that we, we want to answer you and people that apply is that do you have idea to improve pathogen diagnostics? Yeah, and we're calling on scientists proposing innovative ideas for infectious disease diagnostics and treatment. Yeah. And what we want is to address unmet medical needs, infection disease and treatment, but also to promote an ecosystem of translation biomedical research. Yeah? So we, we have received a seed funding from the Etaquene municipality that was awarded to CRISP at UKZN, which was 4.5 million rand for the next three years, which is 1.5 million rand a year which we will disperse 1.2 million rand to fund projects. So the great bulk of this award to CRISP and UKZN is gonna be disbursed to projects that are selected by, by, by ourselves, people participating in the SPARC program, yeah. So I'm just gonna get a Google to, 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 to go over the, the call, but before we go, do, do anyone have any, any general question about SPARC? So we can just have some interaction before we get uh, to the end of the presentation. Okay, maybe people is very uh, interested in the presentation. So let's keep with Google so we can have a whole discussion then. Uh, please Google to you. You just tell me to move the slides. Yeah. Ah, thank you, Tulio. Yes, next slide, please. So uh, who is eligible to apply to this uh, call? It's projects that will be developed within the boundaries of the Eteguini municipality. And the project leaders or the principal investigators must be the rich such as that are appointed at either higher education institutions or the public research organizations for at least the duration of the proposed project. Clinicians, postdoctoral fellows, and postgraduate students, they are also eligible to apply, but their application needs to include a faculty member as the core PI on the application. Next slide, please. What the application entails will be the cover sheet that is distributed along with the call document. Next slide, please. In addition to the cover page, the proposal should be a concise two page limit, which will be covering the description of the problem or the description of the unmet medical need the project aims to address. The solution that the team is proposing to solve or to bring about and also this list of the few things including the market niche at least some evidence 
of or the preliminary survey data of what market is available for the proposed innovation. What is not part of this two page limit will be the CVs of the project team. And the deadline for the application is the 21st of October. In terms of submitting the application, please do follow the guidelines that are given onto the proposal template. Next slide, please. As Tulio highlighted that the bulk of the funding that is available so far for the SPAC South Africa will be used as seed funding for the project. What will be offered to the selected project will be a funding of up to 300,000 per year, depending on the project or the individual proposal. The funding will be tied into the agreed upon project milestones. That means that disbursement of funding will not be a once off lump sum disbursement, but it will be disbursed as per the progression as agreed upon in the beginning of the project. And the goal with this funding is to enable the project team to dis risk their project by carrying out those value adding experiments. How the proposals will be selected from the initial screening, which will be focused more onto the completeness and the responsiveness of the proposals. The applications that are complete and responsive will then be subjected to this review by the selection committee. And the selection committee's review will be focused on the scope of the unmet medical need being addressed, the novelty of the approach, and how feasible is the proposed um, um, innovation within the time period given. So the projects that will be selected from the selection committee will then be invited to pitch their ideas a template will be provided with a set of questions that will be rising from the proposal submitted. Next slide, thank you. So what will be available to the selected projects or the projects that will be enrolled into the program will be the access to the entrepreneurship education, which will help build their capacity in terms of how to prepare their innovations for the market and also the business development aspects. And importantly, also the mentorship by the volunteers from the industry and business and finance sectors. Seed funding, as I've mentioned, will be also available and also importantly, the access to the partnership, the partnership to um, expert researchers internationally and nationally, and the network of business uh, community. That is all that the selected project teams will have access to, which is, as highlighted, is the secret behind this Spark model. Thank you. Next slide, Tulio. We have put together the education program for the first 12 months um, in keeping with the SPAC global model. Um, the program that interchange between the scientific teaching in terms of translation now science, as well as business development topics. And these will be delivered through seminars and workshops. Next slide, please. The SPAC South Africa continues to develop this network of key project champions and role players, which includes the government for its multiple role at different stage of the translational science in terms of co-funding the project 
and also provide the enabling platform. The collaboration also is very critical with the local higher education institutions for their contribution in terms of the innovation and the expert advisory. The private sector, including the industry, the finance, the business and legal, are also key players to support the project in terms of strengthening that research and development, the monitoring and evaluation of the project, and also contributing to the education, that entrepreneurship development. And very important, the funders, different types of funders from philanthropic organizations and investors for the investment of resources into the innovations development. Next slide, please. So this project is one arm of a big biodep and vision, which I will hand back to Tulio to touch on. Thank you, Tulio, over to you. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, Google. So, so we, we just have to, with slides to finish and would be great to get some interaction yeah and questions yeah so so what's the idea of bio Durban? yeah bio Durban is to create a biotechnology incubator in Durban that have many different business area yeah what we call ba yeah that would be a translational research platform a scientific and technological neighbor with a big area of training and capacity building. And, and, and that's what we, we are trying to kickstart now with this start program. Yeah, and of course, working very, very close with all the technology, uh, <laughs> the tech transfer officers of the different universities. Yeah. And then what we're going to be, be working through, yeah, is to then raise funding to, to get a physical incubation space. Yeah. We are also trying to design a master of business and uh, administration that focuses on science and technology and innovation, and then also a space to do consultant service from SSMEs. Yeah. So, so that's what we aim to do in the next, in the next 10 years. Very similar to what Fernando has done in Barcelona to create a whole ecosystem, including a physical ecosystem from that. Before we get there, so what we thought is that really start with the SPARC program that focus a lot on the translational research platform and training and capacity building. And that's very important to us to just start focusing on, on, on that area. Yeah. So if we go, uh, what's the anticipated returns for, for, for our city, yeah, would be exactly to translate, uh, to create a new research infrastructure development and more important human capital development. I think that's quite crucial in South Africa at the moment, yeah, to, to, to regenerate our bioeconomy and our economy, yeah. Also within our university, UK Zen, and I believe that's the same with all the other major uh, high, high learning institutes in, in, in our city, the, the MUT, the DUT, yeah, is exactly to try to get this innovation and entrepreneurship program, yeah. Very important, the SPAC program, it is, um, it is, it is, it, it is part, it is not only for your case and every single, yeah, uh, or the university can apply to that, yeah. With really, we're trying to create the in, entrepreneurial culture, culture in all public research organizations in Durban. And we want to contribute to development of knowledge-based economy, yeah. So thank you, Google. So, so that is just to get the, the, the call advertisement, the, the video of this webinar, it will be in our website for people that, that miss, as you are aware in our city today, we have some major strikes happening, yeah. So to, it, it's very important to us to try to move to create entrepreneurship in, the, in, the, in our city, yeah. So Colin, as we wait people to, to join, would you like to add how is your activities in Zimbabwe? So, I mean, our, our activities are really also still best with uh, trying to see how the postgraduate training at the universities can include sort of uh, translational aspects rather than the traditional approach where the, the students have done projects which are not necessarily going to translate to any product or service. So we are trying to figure out how funding can be 
secured locally so that international funding becomes more an addition rather than the main source of driving our vision. And it looks like you guys have achieved it very well in, in Durban that there's local support. And we wish to understand how you have managed to do that because if we can learn a couple of things, we can also approach the appropriate people here in Zimbabwe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Colin. So, 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 yeah. The the way that we manage to to acquire funding, it is what you know very well as scientists. We 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 are very persistent. Yeah. And and we are very passionate about that. So so we have first approached uh, our technology innovation agents and our different uh, government um, yeah, agents. And then we got good interest from our municipality because our municipality is, is very interested to, to create a, a knowledge-based economy in, in Durban. Yeah, they, they have these this major projects of special economic zones and as part of that, it involved also biopharmaceutical park, yeah. So they saw that as complementary to the to the program, yeah. We we, we also have very uh, big interest from our university. Our university is also at the moment creating a four year degree that in medical in laboratory medical science that involve innovation and entrepreneurship, yeah. So so we're, we're more the interest of our local university and our local municipality to try to translate some of the scientific outputs to products that can generate, uh, that can get to the clinical market, yeah. And what we decided to do is to make that to create a whole ecosystem. So this, this project called It's Open to All or the different uh, academic institutions and public health organizations of, the, of, of our municipality, yeah. Really, really great stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> now, I to ask about the, the, the lecture series. Um, yeah. uh, so, this one is the first one in terms of those M1 to M12. Yes. So, so, so what we're going to do, uh, we have discussed a lot with the, the Spark Finland, as you are aware, PASI has developed this great uh, educational program that is widely used in, in the Scandinavia, yeah. And so we had identified a lot of the topics, yeah. And just to put back the topics. So what we decide to do, it is that the education program, it's gonna focus, we start now in October, yeah. And then it is, it's following a very successful one from the Finland that we introduced the health tech and life science industry. We give case studies of local success story. Maybe we can ask you, Colin, to present because, because against all odds, you have created both companies in South Africa and, and, and in Zimbabwe. Yeah. And then we, we also talk a lot with our tech transfer office in UK, and it's called Incubate, yeah, on how to link between us and the tech transfer office. We're going to have some presentations and Suvina, the, the head of our Incubate, has accepted to give it some uh, in, about intellectual property, IP and patents, yeah. And then we're going to move a lot into protocol development, validation and reproducibility, yeah. And then with market analysis, yeah, diagnostic product development, investment pathway, manufacturing, regulatory, and diagnostics. And one of the objectives that we have is to try to build in a way that also generate a kind of a, a, a degree within the, within the university. I don't know if, Andile, would you like to mention what's the plan for the university for, for creating a, a four-year degree and how that could fit in line with with that plan um, um thanks studio um and good morning everyone um so we we, we do have a four-year um new proposed medical science degree we well, that's the, the 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 provisional name and um we've had a few discussions with with Tulio regarding this where we would like the the program to be more marketable in that we want it to be more entrepreneurial and we want it to we want to have more innovation coming out from the program so we want this program this new program to not only just be 
about the, 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 the science itself, but we want to get our new medical scientists on a track of entrepreneurship and innovation. And we feel that through um, one of the um, participation with the SPARK program, um, that our students could benefit immensely um, through these sessions. So we are in, in talks at the moment to, to try and get them on board, just to our, our current students, just to try and see how this could work out and, and, and benefit them. But we are already positive that this will have a major impact, um, impact on, on their development as, as, as we've um, have held the talk, talks with Tulio. So I don't know if you want me to expand a bit more, Tulio, but I think that, um, that covers it. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Andili. Yeah, so so of course, uh, yeah, one of the big problem is to try to to get the next generation, yeah, to to be teached from the beginning. So 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 Colin starting a MSc program in Zimbabwe, which 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 will also support in CRISP with example some of the hands-on training on on next generation or, or genomics, yeah, and then we also want to do the same with our university, but also to support that and work together from, from graduate students, yeah? And, and, and would be great to also involve the other high-level high institutes in the, in the region. Eh? I think that's the, the, the very big key of the, of the SPAC program, yeah? And one thing that also helps is to have this, this seed funding because we go mentoring people, but it is also the projects that go advancing and they can be feeding in the whole, in the whole process, yeah? So, so we had a, another question before. I think that was from from Andile. Andile, do do do, do you wanna put your question? That was about the, the the areas. Yeah. Oh yes, thanks. Thank you. Um, we my, my my question was related to because I noticed that it was, um, the 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 call specifically, was focusing yeah. on on infectious diseases, and and looking for for diagnostic tools for di infectious diseases. I just wanted to find out if it would be extended if there was a chance that it could be extended to diagnostic tools for non-communicable diseases as well, because I know that we have a number of people that are working on stuff like that within the school. Yeah, yeah, it can, it can be expanded. Yeah. What we thought is to start with things that, that, that we have some expertise and that we can, we can, we can do, but, but would, would be great to get applications also for, non-communicable disease to see to see if we fit the call and if, if we can if we can mentor that yeah so right. so they say yes it can be expanded the, the idea is to be it is and we're going to release many calls yeah to to fill all the projects funding yeah yeah so 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 the, the idea is focus on diagnostics yeah and can be for infectious disease but if you have knowledge within our university or people to mentor in non-communicable disease that are also going to be welcome, yeah. Okay, thank you.